this is a segue to a session that I did in Munich, in Drupalcon Munich back in August. Uh, I did some updates based on two cases that I, I had a chance to work after that. So that's, when I put together, I wanted to really share my experience around uh, working with such organizations and selling Drupal to them and delivering Drupal to, to large organizations. But as I went through those two new cases last year, last six months, and also talking to people today, yesterday, throughout the conference, uh, I, I'm changing the tone a little bit of this presentation to a sense where I think we're comfort, comfortable around Drupal in large enterprise. It looks like, it's, to some case, enterprises are coming and asking for Drupal, and I've seen a few, and talking to some people, uh, I noticed that it's happening here too. But uh, I think that's the most important time now that we don't let our guards lower. So we should be prepared for the competition that is gonna come harder, uh, the proprietary CMSs, and continue to sell Drupal to large enterprise the way we've been doing in the past five years, right? So I think that's the tipping moment where we should not lower our guards around that. So hopefully we can get the momentum going and continue to increase Drupal into large enterprise. Uh, so my, Mark introduced myself just a little bit more, so Chief Architect with CINT. Uh, I've been working with Drupal for, for the past almost five years now, uh, especially in um, cases involving digital marketing, which I'm gonna be elaborating a little bit more what's that about. So that means I haven't worked so much with the government area, but uh, for large organizations, commercial organizations, and, and focusing on the, the final business, the digital marketing website. So I lead a team of pre-sales pre engineers, um, and uh, some contact details later. What I wanted to do basically is to share some details about the cases and scenarios that I have worked in terms of pre-sale uh, for large enterprises. And then, um, encourage you to, especially the ones that are really shops or agencies that are really eager or already doing selling to large enterprise, to build a strong sales team around Drupal, right? So I will talk about being transparent when doing that, so Drupal strengths and weakness, so your whole sales team needs to be aware of that. Uh, it's important to know what the competition is doing, so uh, like I said in the beginning, there's a momentum for us, Drupal is really getting hard, or getting uh, bigger in large enterprises, so you would expect competitors would go after us. So I wanted to share things that I've seen happening in terms of what the competition is doing against Drupal, and some things that are more pre-sales one-on-one, and, uh, and how we can do the, basic, the basics in pre-selling and, uh, and use the community to, to, for that. A quick check, who is actually selling Drupal or working as a shop organization for Drupal? Okay. And is there anyone like buying Drupal or? Okay. <laughs> and uh, who is actually selling to large enterprise or had some experience? Okay, that'd be great also to hear you guys uh, throughout the presentation in the end. I'll be eager to, to hear your experience as well throughout the, the presentation. So um, I don't think I have the audio, but I think my point is basically this. I don't know, this is a BBC video and I just wanted to, to run through. So it's basically uh, a fox, and uh, you can find it on YouTube. Just, just give it a second. With audio, it's much better. <laughs> and it, it gets the mouse. So uh, what's the, the analogy here, right? Like I said, I, I, we're seeing Drupal Enterprise coming to us and talk about Drupal, but, uh, but I still think we should uh, spend energy and investment on keeping the sales force, our sales team, prepared for, for what could be something like the proprietary companies trying to make us be back and be the mouse, and then they will become the fox. Which So we don't want to be at that level, right? We want to be the fox instead of the mouse. So that's my provocation here today, so hopefully we can get out of this session with this mindset. Uh, a little bit of context, so make things easier for, for you guys, what I, I've been doing in my company. So CINT, like Mark said, a Brazilian company, but uh, we have a global uh, delivery um, process, uh, deliveries, uh, global delivery centers uh, in Brazil, Argentina, and China. Uh, we have offices in US, Japan, uh, Europe, 
And uh, with my move to Australia, that's where we're going to be starting uh, an Australia office as well. We are about 1,600 people. We don't only do Drupal, but uh, we have about three fifth talents in Drupal. So that's almost a third, a uh, little bit less, uh, of Drupal developed. So that means a lot. We've been doing Drupal. Big part of our revenue is coming from Drupal. We've built, uh, we built about 400, 450 websites to uh, a couple organizations I'm going to be speaking about and support those sites too. So those cases, uh, unfortunately, I, I cannot share the names of the companies. I'm sure you guys understand, but it's, you might get it throughout the presentation or I don't know. But uh, we've been working uh, with two global Fortune 100 pharmaceutical enterprise. Um, one uh, Brazilian, but it's more Latin American cosmetics organization just chose Drupal with our help last year. Uh, there was another one that I participated last year uh, in the US, which is also a global organization in terms of nutritional products, and also a Japan uh, branch of a global technology research media company, so kind of analysts that are using Drupal too, analyst company. So my experience, my company experience comes from, from those cases, and um, basically what do they have in common, or, or do they still have some things in common when they, they felt like they should switch gears and move what they had, if it was, even if it was a CMS or just custom code, .NET, or just Java. I guess, to some extent, they do share some commonalities. Uh, regulated markets, especially the pharmaceutical ones, highly in that case, uh, almost all of them, they had a presence pulverized across different technologies or platforms across the globe, so it was really hard to maintain that technology form. Uh, also, localization was a key part of the requirement for, for those organizations. Some of them, when I got there, they had the proprietary model in mind only, so all the open source was really something that would scare to begin with, so several questions would come around that. From the business side, though, there was the complaint about the slow time to market. So using either custom code or using proprietary CMS, either way, they would take a lot of time to implement new features or to customize what the business or the marketing teams they, they needed. So uh, they, they, they always complain about that. And of course, uh, a push for, for cost reduction. Well, that's still part of, yeah, that's part of it. But uh, uh, one of the organizations, they really said, well, if it wasn't for, for Drupal, we wouldn't be able to launch this website in a couple months by just leveraging the modules. So that's the, the, the key part. They would just go to proprietary and ask, well, can we build this or can we get a package? Either they have to pay for that package in the proprietary one or build them, their own. And it's, in that case, was uh, Java. And it could have difference around which vendor they used. It would take more time to build that custom package. But in a way, they felt the difference with, with Drupal. And they felt it was easier to go to the market with new features. For example, one particular case was around the integration with Google+. Plus. So we could just get the module that was already there by the time it was launched, the integration, right, with Google+. Plus. So there, a couple weeks after Google+, Plus was launched, uh, a bet, I think a beta phase, someone built a module for Google+, Plus, and just a couple weeks can start using that. So in a proprietary one, maybe you'd still have to ask them to build the package for, or the library for that. So uh, with all those things combined, uh, they all came to a point where they, they had to make a decision as an IT group, uh, which the competitors would go straight ahead and pass them on their, their market. So they, they had some challenge. So either we stay behind or we do things and change and, and try to get ahead again. And they all ended up using Drupal for that. Uh, another poll, uh, so Dries talked a little bit, so I think I, I have some backup on Dries uh, uh, this week. Uh, but uh, is there anyone that thinks that Drupal is, or the enterprise is not important for Drupal? Okay. <laughs> so uh, I guess that provocate, or my question comes from some people that I talk to. It's either they wanna stay with the blogging world or, just, or with the mass market and not worry so much about the enterprise, not spend building modules or concern about uh, security and, and all the things that enterprise consider important and uh, keep the things, keep things around uh, simple or small medium SMBs. Uh, I, I think it's very important. 
I myself, my company, we've learned a lot working with enterprise and Drupal and be able to uh, respond to their challenge when it comes to all the, cha to all the, to all the requirements that they have and improving uh, Drupal platform as well. So I think it's important for us to keep going. Like Drew said in the keynote, like I said, he helped me with my presentation. So eventually get to the Apple, to, to Amazon. So we should, we should really be aiming high to get those guys. And I think we should, we should always uh, spend or, or make investments toward that. So it's been a long time now that Drupal is part of the global enterprise level. It's not, no big news. But uh, like I said in the beginning, I think we should be prepared for that as a sales team. Uh, the two cases that, uh, that I've been part of last year, they came really strong against Drupal with arguments I'm gonna be uh, elaborating a little bit more. So uh, they, they really have a very well prepared sales team. They have demos very well prepared for, for, for those organizations. They have certified sales team. They have all this uh, ammunition, ammunition of, of artifacts or assets that can just come and try to convince organizations to use. And we, well, we're a big community, almost a million developers, uh, according to, to DO. But still, when it comes to sales and even marketing, we kind of try to do the job ourselves, but on our own, right? There's no centralized, I'll do a few things, but there are no centralized effort uh, in terms of marketing and selling Drupal. So I think that's something that we should be focusing on, on, on this year, next couple of years. Because what we've been working so far might not work in the past. Remember, Drew is talking about web experience management, right? So that's a new thing came in the market, but also being uh, funded by those proprietary enterprises, uh, proprietary CMSs, uh, to try to bring everything into one product, and that would go against, or would go uh, to some extent against what Drupal is, right? You would have to combine products. Uh, so Adobe, Sitecore, Oracle, they're all putting together, acquiring companies and putting together several products and trying to convince organizations which this, with this new approach, web experience management, right? So uh, it's not working. The way we used to sell Drupal to those organizations is not working. It's not that easy anymore. And it could be unfair sometimes, like I said. So uh, I think we should try and, uh, and spend our energy on that area too. Not only development, not only support, but really think about marketing and sales. And that's where I wanted to spend a few time, a few, uh, spend some time on that, which is basically the strengths, look at the competitors are doing and, uh, and training your sales team. The first thing is uh, about Drupal strengths and weakness at the enterprise level. So I think it's key for us, especially if you have not worked with enterprise before, understand what are the difference between SMBs and enterprise? What are the type of requirements that you might be faced with uh, when it comes to, to participating in a bid for an enterprise? Uh, there is some debate about what could be a large enterprise. To, to the purpose of this session, I'm gonna be defining some requirements that some, to some extent, again, might uh, match some of the cases that you guys have. At least we, we know what is not, so it's definitely not the small shops that are just looking for a simple site, so at least we know what is not, but sometimes there's some confusion about what, what's a large enterprise, right? We have some public case that I wanted to share just to illustrate, and plus the ones that I cannot share, but um, basically what is involved, uh, so proprietary software model mindset, right? So that's one key thing that uh, we as a Salesforce team or a Drupal sales team gotta be prepared, we might be facing that. There are several system integration points. So it's, you're not just talking about a simple website that uh, is gonna be out there and not communicating with different systems, right? There's much more involved. You gotta be prepared to answer questions about integration with CIMs and different components. We might be talking about Fortune 500 com so companies that are, uh, that are global, uh, their, their presence is global. They are in the revenues uh, of, I don't know, more than four, five billion dollars a year. So that's the type of organization I'll be talking about today. Uh, they don't have just one major website. I'll talk about dozens or even hundreds of websites. The two pharma companies, they are really on the hundreds of websites around. Uh, I was in the other presentation about migrating large scale uh, Drupal. So several groups involved, so they mentioned about that too. So we're not dealing with just one single product owner. Although sometimes you get that lucky, 
but it's still there's too many groups involved to make that happen. So how you as an organization that is uh, proposing Drupal for, for, for that enterprise, how can you be prepared to deal with different layers, different uh, roles within that organization? Global reach, I said, regulated industry, and the, the cost reduction, as at the beginning. So I think the first thing that uh, we need to do is to be prepared for those challenges. So we gotta be able to answer things about performance in Drupal, right? Uh, multiple sites management. So again, the proprietary SMS, they have all those answers. So how we as a Drupal sales team can answer that right off the bat or show them, right? What are the options that we have in Drupal? What is the best threats around multiple site or multi-site management? The best tools for localization or internationalization as well. How we can uh, show them that Drupal really satisfy those requirements for a global organization. Then when it comes to implementation of Drupal, I think there was a talk about Drupal and using Agile. So uh, how does that affect my delivery process, my delivery method as well? Using Agile and using Drupal, does that change anything, what I'm used to? Are you able to follow my SDOC process as well? Single sign-on, so there, there are a lot of requirements about single sign-on. Uh, uh, usually those organizations will try to, for example, the pharma ones, they'll have uh, portals for healthcare practitioners, healthcare providers, so they just want one central point, but different website, right? Single sign-on is key. And Drupal has some capabilities on that, but it's still, there are partnerships that we can do and use different products. Integration, support, uh, I'm gonna be talking more in detail, so, so one of the first things is uh, I have one person that I call in, in, in this proprietary CMS when I need, need help, but what about Drupal? It's uh, the Wild West, it's, uh, it's just the community who is responsible for that, so you gotta be prepared to answer uh, the, the, those questions. Hosting, security, and analytics, so how we can show Drupal, that can Drupal connected with other components can actually satisfy those, those, those requirements. So I think, so next thing is to, to master what Drupal has to offer, right? I just, I'm sure you guys have more here. I, I, I brought a couple of things that I think have been differential or have, have stand, stand out to those uh, sales engagements that I had last year um, to the enterprise world. And uh, it's really key, have been really key to, to make Drupal success. So I think the first one is flexibility. Uh, when I was able to demonstrate Drupal to them about the flexibility they would have to a point where Drupal in one farm organization is actually different from their competitor, which those two companies actually compete against each other, of course. So uh, it's something that really stands out. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure the proprietary ones you can actually customize as well, but I really believe the Drupal, the level that you can go with that, you can really make the platform mingle in in, 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 the, in the enterprise world and really become their platform without, of course, having, hacking the core. But I think flexibility is one of the key arguments to demonstrate to those organizations during the, the sales pitch. The second one, which ties back to, to our question, I guess, the, is innovation rate. So uh, you are not relying on just the, the, that vendor, the, the proprietary SMS vendor, you are relying on a lot of people using that across the globe. So you're getting diversity, you're, you're, getting, the, you're getting innovation quite faster when compared to, to uh, this monolithic, big, global uh, proprietary CMS organization, right? So I think it's, uh, especially to the marketing teams, uh, IT is very concerned about this, but when it comes to the marketing teams, they really, they really like this, to see they're getting, they're getting content, they're getting, um, features built by different organizations across the, across the globe, right? It's not only uh, Oracle, it's not only Sitecore, not only that organization without too much diversity. They're getting experience, we're getting as a Drupal community, we're getting experience across the globe, different scenarios, and uh, that's really key as well. So those are the two things that, are, that, I, that I think uh, really help Drupal standing out uh, for, for the sales pitch. But I think we gotta be honest and transparent. I think it's one of the, uh, I was talking this morning, one of the key things about us as a Drupal community, we're very transparent on, on, on what we do and how we do things. So uh, you wouldn't hear, I guess, proprietary SMS talking about their, their weaknesses or their, their flawless. So, uh, but we gotta, be, we gotta be able to talk about during the sales pitch as well. 
and I have a few here that I've been challenged last year. And I think we just don't show it as a, as a flawless or an issue, but uh, you just show how things are getting fixed or how things are getting better, right? So one of the things uh, I'm saying over and over, Dries mentioned that, other sessions mentioned that, is about the altering. Those organizations, when I started with one of them five years ago, the marketing team, they wouldn't want to actually do the content change. They would rely to us as a vendor or to a different department that there was more technical. That has changed quite a lot throughout the years. But the organization has chosen Drupal five years ago and has done nothing to improve this experience. So uh, we had a bit of a challenge trying to go after the, the, the implementation of better interface for the content editors, right? Still not that perfect. Still there's some investment that needs to be done. But I think the key part here for new sales is really to look at the Spark project, is to look at what is being done in terms of improving the sales, uh, the content altering experience. Uh, when you see other products, they have inline editing for a long time now. Uh, and finally, we're getting that in Drupal. So that was one of the key things that, I, that I've seen happening that would, would go against Drupal. So I think we should be prepared to show uh, that uh, this is going to be, or it's already being tackled. The second thing, which is kind of related to the content staging, so the ability, mostly ability to preview, is not, a, is not one of the strongest part in Drupal. Again, looking at other proprietary softwares, uh, and again, if you guys have more experience, just shout out. But uh, you would have the preview, so you would do the content change in staging. We could preview the whole thing in context. In Drupal, this last time I checked, we cannot do that so perfectly yet. So we still have no way to see the, the whole page within the website unless you do the whole staging and production, right? But how can I do the production chains and actually see things in production in the context of the website? If I have a pop-up window or a layover, how can I actually see that? It's not that simple right now. So the content stage initiative is trying to tackle some of that and improve. And I think this one is being financed by the large-scale Drupal, which I'm going to be talking very soon. Content management, configuration management initiative as well. So the whole deployment, uh, again, uh, when I went over there and there was someone that heard about Drupal, they would come with those points. The, the preview, altering, and uh, the ability for smoother deployments, right? Again, those, the other platforms, they would have a simple way, just one straightforward way of pushing content configuration from different environments to production. We still struggle a little bit, but there's a lot of things happening starting with the configuration management. So that makes things, things much easier for that. So be aware of that and bring up during the sales pitch uh, and, and of course show them. The next one is really learn what the competitors are doing. Uh, I guess uh, I could feel that I couldn't actually talk to the competitor and, and see their, doing, their, their, their actions around this. But, but when I was listening to the customer doing the sales pitch and he was choosing between, between this or Drupal, I would get the sense of those things, especially around foods, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, that is still, you might think that I should be fast or way behind us, still gonna face some of them. There are still some guys that uh, were part of the whole Microsoft thing 10, 15 years ago. And I faced down in Brazil last year, and uh, one of the first questions was around uh, security with open source, right? So uh, the point that I, that I showed him is, is to talk to security specialized organizations is basically just a regular concern. So you gotta do your homework, you gotta have, you still gotta have your, your team that's gonna be doing the tests and validation of websites, regardless if it's Drupal, if it's a proprietary CMS, we're still changing code. It's still it's a web application at the end of the day. So you, st you still gotta do your homework. Right, so uh, this is this is really a myth that uh, we gotta be prepared to 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 mitigate. Again, U.S. I'm not seeing that so much. I don't know Europe. I haven't heard, but uh, in Brazil, I don't know here. There's still guys that would think that uh, wow, well, open source, security, Drupal, and, uh, and there's also the whole uh, security committee. Right, we gotta be able to explain how this work and how you as a vendor or as an agency can actually apply the patches and actually part of your process of the, the governance of the platform, right? So be prepared that it might come as one of the, the myths. Support, so uh, the same organization, the, the Latin America Cosmetics, 
they said, well, you know what, I can just call uh, this guy in this organization and I can, he's gonna fix whatever is failing within the whole platform. If it's the website, if it's the CRM, if it's the other component underneath it, he's gonna fix because it's just one, it's everything with him. So I'm very comfortable with that. Well, he got a point to some extent, I think. He just have to call one person uh, compared to this scenario where, well, there's something wrong with the website and this website integrates with this um, ESB or another tool. So I gotta bring both vendors or three vendors on a call and try to fix that. So things might get a little bit hairy or messy. But I like to, to show, uh, what I usually do, I show a, an innovation fostering scenario. So that's more one focal point, right? Or just one support. He would handle the whole thing in red. But when I'm pitching Drupal, I try to be in a way that you're gonna be able to bring more innovation to the organization, more diversity again. Just sticking with one organization, you are kind of locked to whatever the rate of innovation is, whatever they're, be, they're gonna be bringing to you. You're not gonna be fostering discussions or things that can be improved in your organization. So I, I, I show something like this, right? So yeah, the organization, yeah, they can still do all the other components. We don't wanna conquer the world, don't wanna do everything. Although a few things, yeah, yes, we wanna do. But, uh, but yeah, we can leave with that. And you know what, by the time we get on a call to improve our platform, we're gonna be getting feedback from different perspectives. We're gonna be getting feedback from us as a Drupal, and we have been working with different organizations. We have the community. And yes, we're gonna be also be getting feedback from your current vendor, whatever best practice he's suggesting. And then you get the, you get the best out of it, out of the, the two vendors. So for support, that's what I, I tend to, to move the discussion around has been very beneficial to them. And rest assured, I guess, the thing that also come is around, there is no support, it's just open source. Who's supporting this? Who is behind this code, right? So uh, then you have to go and tell about the open source, how it works, how the Drupal community works. But rest assured, you're not gonna be locked in. So the whole vendor lock-in, that's one of the things that I use. You're not gonna be locked in with CIMT. You can actually go to another vendor. There's plenty of vendors that can actually help you with that. So, uh, and we're just growing and growing. So this is also key to bring to them. Again, around transparency, so that's very important. Performance, um, I guess this has to do with some Drupal cases that haven't been so successful, right? So that gets out there, people will know about it. And uh, I like to think that performance is well under control in terms of Drupal, as long as you, of course, you use the right add-ons. So there's plenty of components that you can use and you should bring that even in the sales pitch. Especially, of course, if you face that, that question. Well, I heard the Drupal is low, Drupal is just, just bringing my site down, so I don't wanna use it. One of the key things that I also say is that maybe what you heard was because Drupal is not the right tool for the right job. We try, you try to build Facebook maybe with Drupal. Yes, can be done, but uh, you might think about what, what you wanna achieve in the end of the day, right? Yes, you, you can build Facebook with those components as well, but then the impression was out there already, right? So you, you, gotta, you gotta show that it's not, it's not like that. The other thing that uh, I heard was, well, you know what, with proprietary vendors, I can just call them, and because I'm paying, I can try and influence what's gonna come in the next build, right? Depend, depends, of course, the organization, how much power they have with that. Uh, how much they're paying for license fees, et cetera, but uh, somehow they, they have some feeling that they can influence, influence more on the proprietary world. And uh, here, how would they do that to influence Drupal 7, Drupal 8, how they can do that, right? I guess we have to use the community, we have to go back and talk about how the organization should be part of, of the commission, trying to foster that, should have not only the vendors, but their IT team also being part of the community so they can See, see what's going on and, and really feel how they can actually be part of this ecosystem. So that's one important thing. And I'm, I'm happy to, to see that this one I just uh, used uh, one time, there's just one organization that is part of it. But uh, the large scale group, I think everyone, or most of you guys know what it is. But uh, something that I think is founded by Acquia and uh, this organization, this former company is actually part of it and uh, is, is contributing with basically money 
in making investments, but across different groups. So that's how it works. And then they can focus on particular, in particular features that they need that are very common to them. So I think the first, uh, the first thing that came out of it was related to content staging. So they built quite a few modules and it's gonna come back to the community, right? So they have a roadmap, they get together every month. So like the IT directors of the organization that are part of the group. So for large enterprises, I think this is key for a, a very small amount of money compared to, I think, for the license fees, you can actually join uh, a special group of corporations that might have the similar pain points that you have leveraging Drupal and uh, you can actually do it better by sharing the resources and the financing. So I brought this and a couple months after they chose Drupal, they joined the, 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 the group and are still investing on that. So this is a very good point. Drupal Talent, we all keep hearing about this. My personal view and working with my developers in Brazil is that it's getting better. So uh, it, yes, it's true, still have a shortage, but uh, there, there are a bunch of things happening around that. And I think the global training days, I think last year was the first year that, uh, that we did, uh, as the association did. So I think that's gonna be key if we continue to participate. I don't know if you guys had a chance to join that. I, I really recommend you try to put together, even if it's just the What is Drupal uh, uh, course, it's just a couple of hours in the morning, but try to help with that. It's gonna be very important. And uh, again, they are gonna be bringing this into the sales pitch. Universities, so there's some working happening in trying to put Drupal as part of curriculum universities. So that's also something that can be bought. Uh, training companies, there's, I see every now and then more training companies spinning up. And I think was, I just added about Dries, uh, he mentioned about the symphony. So I think in Drupal 8, things are gonna be, tend to be a little bit easier to bring new developers and get away from the Drupalisms that we have in the other versions of Drupal. Um, so the other thing is the web experience management. So I told you that uh, I, I do see as a trend in the market, but I also sometimes get the feeling that it has somehow been fabricated by, by those proprietary ones, but it's still, it does make a lot of sense to, to the topics that are bringing, bringing, being brought to this. Uh, marketers are really needing this. So uh, I think we gotta be prepared to answer the questions, how Drupal can support my web experience management, right? Especially if you luckily get access to the marketers, which I don't usually get to, it's just the IT or the group between IT and marketing. But uh, this talk will, will definitely come. And it involves basically being worried about how you're building the brand, right? So uh, as an IT organization, as, as an IT vendor, us, we gotta be prepared to really be worried about what does, what does that mean to build this website in Drupal? How can I actually help you, the brand, to achieve your goals, right? So Dries mentioned the keynote about commerce, content, and community. There are some pillars that you can deep dive on, on the web experience management, but it, it, it all basically goes back to conversational engagement, being able to create a community, and then listen to that community so we can go back to our brand. So what are the tools that along with Drupal we can help marketers uh, listen to their, to their consumers and then adapt around that? So how, we can be, how the brand can improve their conversational engagement? Demand generation, how I can actually e email newsletters, for example. So how I can be more proactive and be more personalized around generating more demand. How does Drupal can help with that? Does we need to bring another tool for that? Maybe, right? But we gotta be able to show that Drupal can actually connect to the tool, to email newsletters, or even to ads, right, for advertisement. So uh, what are the tools that I can help, uh, that can help Drupal be better at demand generation? Content optimization, so analytics, SEO, what are the tools, if not just Drupal, that can help, again, the brands achieve the content optimization? And multi-channel management, I get over and over, people, everyone is talking about this, it's not just mobile, it's not just the desktop site, we're talking about mobile, mobile apps, and pushing content to the social media as well. So uh, that's very high level, but uh, that's the web experience management, right? So that's, if you look at the, the, same, the proprietary CMS website, you're gonna see a product that's basically something around those lines. You're gonna be covering the whole thing, your whole ecosystem, marketer, I'm covering everything for you. And what about us as Drupal? What we, how we can cover that, right? And lastly, as the, 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 the 
part of the, the three points is uh, let's focus on our pre-sales on one. Let's try to empower our sales team and leverage the community to make it better. So one of the things I think I saw in the business day uh, and we use quite a lot is a uh, requirement score matrix. So uh, this is, there's, there's no standard one, although several requirements might be the same, but it's really something that it can help the organization and build together with them. What are the most important requirements for you when you're choosing a CMS? And it's not only for you as an IT, you've got to bring the, the marketer, the final consumer of the solution you're putting out there, and then put some value out of it. So uh, it's not just listing out the requirements, but trying to put what is the value that, uh, how much does this represent to you? Because then if it's not so much, Drupal can really stand out or the other solution will stand out. But anyways, you're being transparent and honest about that. So I really recommend having uh, a, a template. I can even share this one later with you guys. Uh, but if they don't have one, work with them in the very beginning of this assessment and put together something that is very customizable to them. And uh, well, there's a risk that of course they might choose the other CMS, but you know what? It is what it is, right? But it, it, at least we're being transparent and honest and being able to maximize what Drupal can actually do for them. It's very straightforward. I've been through two scenarios like this. One actually, one spreadsheet was prepared by an uh, analyst firm. So uh, they helped the organization put together the spreadsheet. So you, you can tell uh, some particularities around that and you can tell for example, when the person was used to work with another CMS, in that case was SharePoint. So the spreadsheet was created towards requirements that only SharePoint could satisfy to some extent. So I was able to just, well, let's talk about this. You know what, this is SharePoint. If you look at the other CMS, they're not gonna be supporting this. So um, just be prepared for that. I guess what I also realized, uh, when they come to ask for, for help on choosing a platform, is that it's not only the technical platform. There's, there's also something happening between the marketing and the IT. They're not talking uh, as they should. The communication is not as smooth as possible. Uh, they have different goals. Some of we can see here. Uh, and IT has its own goals as well. Might not be supporting only the marketers, but be supporting different organizations within the enterprise. So I guess what's very really important for us when we're pitching that is also to understand what is this business gap, right? How we can fit in in the middle here and complement those two organizations, right? So I guess it's not only the platform, but being able to understand what, what is the, the traction that is going on, the friction that is going on between the two groups. That really has, has been helpful for us to go one step ahead, not technology, but uh, being able to understand what is happening in the organization. Again, all the challenges around different groups, they're big. You, you don't get that answer just in the first week. So you gotta be prepared to spend some time with your sales team, finding out, interviewing, getting to know, connecting to different people in the organization, and eventually you connect the dots. Then you set up the session to have everyone, let's talk about Drupal and how Drupal can help both of your organizations within the enterprise. So I think that's very key as well. And this one was just December, yeah. Uh, I was surprised to hear, uh, so th of course organizations, they hire those uh, companies to advise them, especially in such a critical moment, right? So we should not be naive. They're not just listening to, to us, Drupal, and to the proprietary ones. They're also looking for someone that might be in the middle, right? So I, I had a chance to, to go through the scenario where they hired the company to, the, the analyst company to help them make a decision. And there was, uh, they, the organization, the, the analyst firm tend not to benefit Drupal. So they would bring things around TCO even for Drupal. And uh, I really recommend we also try, if we have, if you guys have capability to, to try and work with those analysts. There, there are ways you can work with that, can influence that. Uh, as well, but more, most important, being transparent. So if you have access to analysts and you can show off your case in Drupal, please do it. So you can, they have the perception that Drupal is getting some friction on some issues in some areas on their web experience management. So by the time they go to recommend Drupal, 
is really not going to help. So uh, if we can try to work on that area too, if you have uh, the capacity to do so, I really recommend. So right now we're, we're, we're trying to have schedule meetings with, with specific analysts about CMS throughout the year so we can, we can show them the cases that we've been doing in Drupal and how our customers are benefiting from that. It's just being honest and transparent, right? But uh, sometimes it's really hard to find, just Google and try to find success cases in Drupal that really can touch on, on the mind of those guys. So I really recommend if you have capabilities, try to influence such organizations as well. Lastly, I guess it's a try to build the best strategy for, for a sales team, right? So it's, it's a process, not, it's not gonna take a couple weeks or months. The last one took me 12 months from the time I was called for the first presentation until I get an SOW signed. Uh, so be prepared to spend some time. And uh, the better you were prepared, I mean, the more you were prepared, the better, right? So um, one, the, one of the things about was key for us is uh, by the time we we're, were there, they wanted to see a Drupal running. And uh, I Google around, I search around, I didn't find a demo that could really satisfy what they wanted to see. Although you can, you can show what's out there, but it's really, my recommendation is to, somewhere back there, try to customize. So that was really successful. We spent, we had the, the, of course, you have to map your resource, but we had the chance to actually get a, three developers for one week get a few use cases of a website that's live out there for the organization, and we build those features in Drupal and did a demo. So we get all the assets from the site, we build the website and show them in just one week and a half. That was key for, for them to all. And then also show the CMS. Although we couldn't work out the interface the way we wanted, but uh, we could show, well, you can change content, just you here, and then you have access, you have permission, you have logs, you have track of what's going on. So I really recommend when going after enterprises, be prepared to save some time, some resource to actually build them more, customize them. Generic ones, I'm not gonna be touching upon what the marketer has in mind. He wants to see his problem being solved by that, right? So that's, uh, that was very key. Lastly, uh, I keep saying lastly, I guess, but uh, also <laughs> uh, team up. Uh, even us, although I said 300 talents, you know what, there are skills that we don't have. Even the web experience manager, there are components that we just don't know how to answer some question. So uh, there, there's a couple scenarios last year, so we brought one of our partners to complement our, our offer and we work on the teach process together. So this is really key, I guess it goes along with the whole community and uh, I really recommend. So if you're going after those giants and uh, you have the opportunity to bring someone else with you, I, I'm sure there's, there's space for everyone within that organization. So I really recommend doing a, a partnership and, and working together on, on pre-sales for, for those organizations. And I might be getting to the lastly part one. Uh, know when to give up. One of the things, and I said it before, is around trying to force uh, the customer to use the tool. Again, uh, we have our ego very, very big and we want Drupal to really can do anything, everything, but I'm stronger believer on, on, on the, the right tool for the right job, right? So try to build an LMS or try to build something in, on top of Drupal. Yes, we know it can be done, but um, you have to be transparent and to say, you know what, you're better off just buy this because you wanna build such a specific solution so many business rules. We're gonna, be, we're gonna have to customize so many Drupal modules to do that. You're better off buy that solution and then let's use Drupal for something else, right? So that's my recommendation as well. And I, and I don't think that, I think that doesn't help Drupal at all. So that's, those are the cases that we hear Drupal was not successful. And then, so I really recommend, let's be transparent. If it's failing on there, Drupal's really not getting it, no score at all. Just be honest, and you're gonna get a customer eventually. So uh, just be transparent. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm good. Uh, guys, that's pretty much it. Kind of uh, a little bit boring, but uh, for a Friday afternoon. But I wanted to share those, that, that experience. And my recommendation is try to really empower your sales team, invest on that, 
again, things that I heard this week, I think we're in a comfort zone. Customers are, are, asking, are coming and asking for Drupal, uh, but it might not last that long, and uh, I'm sure the, the proprietary ones, they will come more strong, so I'd rather be prepared for that. And we have a huge sales team. We're able to do marvelous things as long as we get prepared for it, right? And my last point is to go back to this, right? What do we rather be? So right now I think we're the fox, but I wanna continue to be the fox. So uh, hopefully we will continue investing in our sales team. We continue to be and growing the way we are right now. And that's pretty much it. I don't know, any questions? So to that point, first we try to implement a governance module. So um, I don't know, should I re answer, repeat the question, right? Sure. So uh, what are the processes or how we can assure the reliability of the modules being chosen by the corporation, right? So we, we, when we get in, first thing is let's put a governance process in place for, for the modules. We don't want developers to just go and choose whatever they want, right? Uh, so. For organizations, although the whole time to market, it might be slowing down things, I think it's very important, especially if we're talking global scale, different vendors working with the code. So we gotta have a, a very strong process in place. So for, for the two pharma ones, they do have a very strong, so every time a developer suggests a new module, it has to go to some sort of approval to use that. So we try to get that ahead during, during the, the, the grooming of the sprint. So based on the requirements, try to identify which module will best suit that particular requirement and submit for approval. Usually it takes a couple of days and then they allow it. And of course, try to use a, a maybe just beta or ready for production released versions. Although alpha also sometimes it would allow it and then we would implement or fix the bugs and eventually help move to the next level. But uh, I guess the, the, the answer, the very short answer is have a strong governance process. Um, no, 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 it was, I don't, I don't recall any, any case, yeah. I mean, first the developers are actually assessing that before submitting, and then there's their, their internal committee that's actually reviewing. So for that particular requirement, it's basically supporting what they want. Um, and then there's security involved as well, that's part of the, the governance. You mean like a checklist of? Um, I don't have it handy right now, but I, I, those customers, that's what they call the, once they establish the governance process, they create what they call the platform, their own platform. So a platform is basically a set of Drupal modules that uh, should be tried, should be reused across all the sites to be implemented. So to get a new module into that platform, has to go to that process, uh, and then and then they will be blessed and be they able to used by by them across the globe. In the beginning, when I, start, when I started working with Drupal, yes, uh, you know what, and, and I don't see that happening much right now. I, I feel like the, the IT groups, the large enterprise, slowly are getting up to speed with the innovation 
with looking what SMBs are doing and trying to bring that to the enterprise. So the cool stuff that are happening out there, they wanted to bring, is not as fast as an SMB, but I feel like they're trying to change the mindset and instead of trying to do things the same way again, trying to le leverage what has been done in, in startups and, and in small companies. And, uh, and, and we're seeing a lot of startups become enterprise just in a couple of years, right? So they're getting that experience and trying to bring into the, to their process of uh, creating new websites or new, new requirements. So it's getting better. In the past five years, changed a lot, but it's not that fast. <laughs> Um, they basically came with uh, with the whole analytics was very key. So, for example, um, I think Adobe Omniture. So they just come with the, with the feature where well, it's everything fairly integrated. It's just as easy to create a new website. The Omniture just worked fine over there. So that was one of the key things that I I, I heard. But then I would go with, uh, you know what, you can either use Omniture, there's a module for that in Drupal, or you can use Google Analytics, or you can use a core metrics, for example. So uh, that's that, that battle I've been through, that was one of the things. Um, apart from that, no. Yeah, yeah, or at least you need more configuration to do it, right? So you can do a few things with views and roles in terms of personalization. There's more you can code on, on, on top of it. But, um, but I think they come with everything ready and they show it. And at, whereas, whereas us, we just have to, to build and show them. So it takes, takes us more time to actually show what they want in terms of web experience management. I guess that's one of the key things. I, I'm not that, at that level, but that's a good idea. Uh, ideally, especially when it comes to web experience management. Uh, I mean, we're seeing companies, so we're, we're not uh, a product company, so, but we're seeing like Acquia is doing something very similar to that, building uh, an ecosystem around one product and, and just bringing components. But yeah, ideally, that will, will make, make things just at the same level as the, the proprietary ones I do, are doing, yeah. I, I don't do that. What I, what I do is basically the demos try to bring the requirements, but ideally that's where we want to be. Or to be able to, knowing those components, like there's a, there's, I think there's a bunch of companies um, here this week that offer like offer, uh, service of translation, for example, and there's a module to connect with Drupal. So we, knowing that, we don't act, actually have to build something, but actually show that those things can work together and then bundle in and, and, and sell. Both, I think both. So uh, we have to be proactive. So uh, uh, as we start building those cases, definitely that help us as well to position herself as supporting uh, service to large organizations. But, um, but especially as me, a Brazilian company, we're not so famous in US or, or, or Europe, so we have to do some proactive work. But there has been scenarios where uh, they would just come and ask uh, for Drupal service because they saw it. So all the things that we've been doing out there in the community and, uh, and unfortunately, we cannot share those cases, but uh, somehow they get to know. There is, of course, word of mouth. 
So uh, as we continue building new cases, that eventually will, will help us. Yes. Um, what about the rapid and the office? Uh, the office is going to be my place in the beginning, of course, <laughs> as usual. But uh, yeah, eventually we're going to be seeing it. Yeah, seeing it. Yeah, that's being started over there. Yeah. Okay. There you go. My only question is if you want to be the fox, do you have to get a face full of snow? <laughs> Um, that was fantastic. Look, could you please join me thanking Philippe Rubin. <laughs>